10 ways you can say I love you to your spouse, to your, your partner in relationship, to help your relationship move to the permanent side, to help to keep the flame going in your relationship. And number one on my list is applaud each other's achievements daily. In little, little achievements that your partner does, try to, to, to encourage them, try to applaud them, try to make them feel good, make them feel that they've achieved something great, even if it's very, very little. Just try to encourage them, basically. Encourage each other's achievements. Try to appreciate it. Appreciate each other's achievements. And this way, your partner will feel loved to feel cared for, to feel in heaven. And number two on my list is praise each other and say I love you as much as possible. Always praise each other. Nothing stops you from waking up in the morning and say, oh baby, you look so sweet. Oh baby, you look so lovely. Oh my dear, you are looking gorgeous. You are looking this, you are looking that, you are looking that. And never forget to say the word I love you. Always say it whenever you have the opportunity because you never can tell what tomorrow holds. Yes. There are some persons that they regret their life. They are, they are in regret because they never express how much they cared about a certain person, how much they cared about someone they truly love. They never said, I love you, and now the person is gone. And you can never say I love you to a dead man or a dead woman. So when you are still alive, praise each other, say I love you. It helps to lighten the mood. It helps to encourage your partner to know that you, you, are, you have them in your heart. And number three on my list is provide time off and get away. It's not always being indoors, 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 staying indoors. Create time off. From your busy schedule to spend time together, travel, go for vacation if you can afford it. If you cannot afford it, take yourself to a little nearby eatery. Just little, little things like that makes your partner feel loved. Even if you cannot afford to go to charity, you can go to crunches. Sit down there, buy shawarma. Shawarma is very cheap. It's not 1,600 or 1,500 or 400 there, but buy shawarma with a bottle of drink. Sit down there, chat, enjoy yourself, and just forget about your sorrows. Forget about um, the troubles around you. Enjoy yourself because you may never have that opportunity again. And the fourth one on my list is reach out into your wallet even when it's not their birthday. You don't need to wait for your spouse's birthday to gift them. No. Who says that you cannot buy them gift any time of the day? any time of the year, any time of the month. When you see something nice and you know that your partner will love it, nothing stops you from buying it. You don't need to wait till their birthday. What if the person doesn't live to see the birthday? What if you don't have money to gift them on their birthday? So you see why it's very important that you gift your partner often, if you can afford it, often, even when it's not their birthday. Always try to gift them. Number five on my list is eat your own cooking. This has to do with the husband. It's not always your wife has to cook. Your wife has to cook every single day. January to December 247, you have, have to be, your wife has to be in the kitchen. No. Nothing stops you from cooking. If you as a man cannot cook, you can order the food. Your wife deserves some break sometimes. Sometimes she's overwhelmed with the, with the busy life that she needs that break, but because she knows that if she doesn't cook, there will be no food in the house. So nothing stops you as a husband to cook. Eat your own food. I've heard some men say that it's forbidden for them to enter the kitchen. Who said so? My husband cooks. In fact, if I want to eat one of the best beans so far, I ask him to do that. Because me, I cook. But you see my beans, I don't know what happens. No matter how I try, it will never come out well. So most times, if I want to enjoy beans, since I know I'm not a lover of beans, if I want to enjoy beans, I ask him to cook it. I'll just say, okay, baby, please cook. You know your beans is always sweet. I better cook more chop. 
he cooks and we enjoy it together. There's no, there's no way that it's written that a woman must always cook. So in another way to show that you love your wife, to say you love your wife for the husband is to cook, eat your own cooking once in a while. Enter the kitchen and cook. Let your wife relax and enjoy your food. Number six on my list is call each other during your working hours just to say, I love you. Do you miss me? Yeah. Call each other. For those couples that don't call each other, once you leave for work, everybody on your own, so you come back in the evening. No. Once in a while, just sneak out five minutes or five seconds of your time. Oh, hello, baby. How are you? I just got to tell you that I'm missing you. I'm missing you. I miss your voice. I miss your trouble. I miss... Imagine if at that time you are calling that your partner is passing through some challenge at work or having a rough day. Your call alone can lighten the mood. I know sometimes when I'm in the office and I'm just tired, I'm just bored, I'll be like, oh, please. And I just see my phone. My baby boo is calling. Oh, baby, I just want to know how you are doing. I feel good. I feel automatically, the moment is, I, before we even talk, I see his call. My face brightens up. I start smiling. That is what it does for those who don't know the importance of it. It helps to lighten the mood. I feel good whenever my husband calls me when I'm at work. And sometimes I'll just call him to look for trouble. Ah, husband man, so you've forgotten you have a wife somewhere. And practically, he dropped me off at work. I imagine maybe I'm just in the office and I'm tired and I'm bored. I'm looking for him to look for trouble. I'll pick up my phone. Ah, Oga, so you don't know you'll call me, she, you've forgotten you have a wife. He will just laugh. I imagine at that time I'm calling, maybe it's having a tough time at work. My call at that time will help him. In fact, saying that the Lord will make him start laughing. Because it's funny. Now, imagine his husband coming to drop you and you're still calling him to ask him that he has forgotten he has a wife. When practically just dropped you just two or three hours ago. So let's learn to call each other during our working time to know, check on us, to check on each other, to say I love you, to say I miss you, I can't wait to see you. It helps to strengthen the love and the relationship. And number seven on my list is have interest in each other's interests. What do I mean by interest in each other's interests? If you find interest in what your partner loves doing, if your partner loves football, even if you're not a football fan, once in a while, just sit down with him. Carry your, your popcorn and a glass of juice. And as he's watching, you're eating your popcorn. And you're asking silly questions, the person will just be laughing. It helps lighten the mood. If you're, that is just for example, that is for a hobby, but for other things in life, if your partner is the type that loves book, show interest in it. How do you show interest? By encouraging the person. If you have the money to sponsor the person, you sponsor that person. If you just anything that the person finds interesting or is interested in. You as his other spouse should also put interest in that help the person to become better in that area that he or she has found interest or he or she is interested in. In this way, your partner will feel love. In this way, you haven't said, I love you, but your action has said it that you love him or her. And number eight on my list is argue when you are by yourself argue when you are by yourself you see some couples you see some persons they can quarrel in front of their visitor anywhere in the street anywhere some some persons derive joy in washing their dirty linens outside they derive joy in 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 bringing down their partner they feel by shouting at your partner in public makes them better this in particular has to do with the men. So men feel that by the time when they shout for their partner, their wife in public, it makes them more man. No. In fact, you are disrespecting yourself because tomorrow somebody else will talk to your wife the way you don't want. Why? Because you started it. You can't talk to my husband anyhow. In my presence, ah, they never born you that day. Because I will not talk to I don't talk to him anyhow. So nobody can do that. If you try it, you are looking for trouble, you will get the trouble. That is just it. You don't need to argue. You just wait when you enter the house. You settle yourself in, inside the house and let it go. 
there's no need arguing in the public. It doesn't say what. It doesn't say you love each other. And number nine on my list. Tell no one about their shortcomings. Tell no one about their shortcomings. There's no need telling everybody the shortcomings of your husband. If your husband is Let's say, for example, that your husband is broke. You as the wife, you are the one um, catering for the family. There's no point going to tell people outside that your, that your husband don't have money, that you are the one feeding him. There's no point you. Probably there are little, little issues or health challenges that your partner is going through. There's no need going out telling people that. In fact, you are rubbing it on yourself because tomorrow they will make you the center of gossip. They will make your marriage the center of gossip. So there's no point going outside to tell people about your your partner's weakness. It doesn't say well. It doesn't say you. It doesn't show that you love that person. Because love bears all things. Love endures. Love is patient. Love is kind. Just name it. Love is everything good. So if you say you love someone, you should be able to close. Your own strength should cover up for their weakness. So there's no point going outside telling people your spouse's weakness. Tomorrow somebody will use it against them and you will not be happy and it will backfire on you. And if your spouse is not happy, you yourself, you will not be happy in that marriage. Because it's what you give. It's what you have. It's what you give. If you are not happy, you cannot make your, the other person happy. You can only make the other person happy when you, you are happy. And the last, number 10 on my list, Examine each other's strength and be blessed by it, which links to the to the number nine uh, way you can say I love you. Don't share the person's shortcoming. So instead of you to dwell on the weakness of your spouse, on the weakness of your of your wife, of your husband, of your partner, look for their strength and just bask in it. Enjoy it. Just just be the, whenever you feel like giving up, remember, ah, this person is my strength in this. This person is this. This person is that. Without this person, I cannot do this. Without this person, it helps in a long way. But most times, we all see people's weaknesses. We don't see their strengths. And you should know that in your own weakness is where his own strength will help. And it's in his own weakness, it's where your strengths will help. If both of you are, have, are, are strong in the same area, it is not, it's not going to be balanced. So your weakness, your own strength covers for his weakness, and his weakness covers for his strength. So for example, in my marriage between myself and my husband, I know his weakness, I know his weak points, and I don't complain, I just move on with it because and I am grateful to God that in those things that he is weak in, in those things that I know that even if Jesus come, it's not going to do them for me. I can handle those ones by myself. So I don't I don't complain about it because he cannot do it. I can do it for myself. I can fill in that gap. And in my own weakness, that is where his strength covers up for. So he doesn't complain when he has to do with my weakness because, of course, he himself can fill in for that. So it balances. In that way, I will not be dwelling on his weakness. Oh, you cannot do Let's, Let me give for example. I know he doesn't like washing clothes. I mean, I can wash clothes 20 times in a day. So why would I be complaining if he doesn't help me to do that? I know he can't do that. Not that he cannot do that. He doesn't love doing it because of his hands. He has this very something like whatever he does, the hands be, to be bleeding. It would be wicked on my own part to ask him to go and do that. Knowing full well that after doing that, that means in the next two days, in the next three days, he can't use his hands. That is a weakness. And in that weakness, I have my strength there. I don't I can wash for 20 times in a day. I don't have issue about that. That is a weakness. So there's no point dwelling on that every day. I use it to complain and complain and complain and complain and complain and complain. I'm just using that for example and complain and complain. It doesn't make sense because this is something I can easily do in less than 10-15 minutes I'm done. 
why dwell on it? Rather, focus on his strength and enjoy it. And enjoy the glory of his strength. That is what life is all about. And I hope you've learned one or two things from this video. And if at this point you haven't subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Please, pardon me, in case you feel that I'm not looking at you. I'm using my front. I'm using the viewfinder. I want to just see the way I'm looking, the way I'm glowing this morning. So pardon me and I'll see you guys in my next video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and leave a decent comment. And I will see you guys in our next video. God willing, be safe. Always remember that Jesus loves you in all situations, in all circumstances. At the right time, he will answer your prayers. And remember, there is no crown without a cross. So if you want to wear a golden crown, you have to carry your cross. And I pray that God will give us the grace to carry our cross and that our cross will not lead us away from his presence. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.